Hello, calculus students! This is Mr. Bean, and we are now in our very final lesson of the year for calculus, at least for calculus A, B, and we're going to cover today something called perpendicular cross-sections. This is a little bit confusing for kids, but uh, I'm thinking, after you have already mastered some of this other stuff from Unit 11, that this one hopefully will not be too bad. We're going to start off, though, instead of at the beginning of the notes, I want to skip down a little ways. So look down on your page and jump down to this first example problem, because I want to talk about what we're trying to do today. So this says to find the volume of a solid whose base is bounded by these two graphs, x squared and the square root of x. So what I want you to do is just very lightly with your pencil, try to uh, just kind of lightly shade this area in, okay? So we're not fully putting it, but just kind of lightly shade that area. Okay, so this is supposed to be the base of an object. So in other words, the object that we're looking at, we'd be looking at it as if we were flying above it, like a bird's eye view, an airplane up above, looking straight down on top of it. This is the base, so we can't see it unless we were able to move to the side. What the, the cross section looks like, so if we just took some type of uh, line and cut this thing right down the middle and opened it up and looked at this little cross section, what that would look like is, in this example, a square. If I were to take just one little piece right here, straight up and down, that would look like a square. If I took another piece, that would also look like a square. This one would also be a square, but it would be really small. Oops, that's not straight up and down. There we go. So you'd have larger squares coming off of your screen towards you. Here you'd have a little square coming off the screen towards you. It's really hard to visualize. I used to have this cool little thing with Play-Doh I'd bring into classes, and we'd play around with some Play-Doh for the day. But let me show you what I've got here that I found that explains this. So here's the idea of what I was talking about. I've got this graph, and if I were to, uh, all these different cross sections, I could move it back and forth. This would be a really small square and then a larger square. So what I'm talking about, if this, looking straight up on it, but if I could turn this, whoa, that is so cool. Look, you can see the square. So as I move it from one side here, the square is getting smaller if I'm starting at the beginning. You have a really tiny square, and you can move it all the way across here until you get to the end. Well, I want to add more squares. So if I had some more squares, you could see here all of these different sizes as a cross. Now, the more squares I have, if I could fill this whole thing up and have a whole bunch of squares, you'd start to see this three-dimensional object of what it would look like. So let's turn this so you can kind of see. So you've got some sharp edges on the side here, uh, and you can kind of tell it's really an interesting shape. So this is where all of the cross sections are a square. If I looked at it from right up top again, see how you can only see the shaded area? Uh, so let me turn this back a little bit like this. So the idea would be if I can find, let me make less squares, if I can find the area of one of these squares, just the area, okay? The area of a square is real easy. It's this side times this side. And then I would do it to another square and another square and another square. Well, the more squares I have, the more accurate this is going to be, if I could add all of these areas up, you would get very close to the volume. That's where calculus comes in. How do we have an infinite number of squares? We're going to use an integral because we're going to make it approach infinity. We're going to take the sum of every single possible square. Let me put in 100 squares here. This is 100 squares on this. And if we could add all of them up, we'd end up getting the volume. So now let's go back to our notes. And that's where this formula comes in. So we're going to integrate from the starting point from A to B of our bounded region. And the cross sections, we're taking the area of the cross section. So what you need to understand there is that the A of X represents the area of a cross section perpendicular to the X axis. The phrase perpendicular to the X axis, that is going to tell you that you're taking an integral with respect to X. So you might add that onto your notes. And somewhere else on your, your notes, you might say something about that, maybe off to the left-hand side here, that if you had the phrase in the problem that it's perpendicular to the y-axis, if you ever see that phrase, then that means you are taking an integral with blah, blah, blah that with respect to y. Okay, So uh, we will do both of those in the lesson today. These are the main shapes we're going to work with for our lesson and then on your practice. And if they, on the AP exam, if they give you something else, a different uh, type of an object, 
they're going to give you the formulas. Okay, you're not expected to have to memorize an equilateral triangle. Like this would be on any tests or mastery checks, uh, or ex as well as the AP exam. They'll never, you don't have to come in off the street knowing this formula. That'd be crazy. A square, of course, you should know that. So a square's area is just the two sides being squared, or one of the sides, I guess I should say, being squared. And then an equilateral triangle is if you all three sides of the triangle are the same. So it would be uh, s squared times the square root of 3 over 4. Semicircle, well, a circle is pi r squared. So a semicircle, half of a circle, would just be pi r squared times a half. And then here we have this weird thing, an isosceles right triangle. That's where you have something like this, where you have a 90 degree angle like that. And this is considered a side. This is considered a side. This is your hypotenuse. Sometimes you'll be given the hypotenuse, and you have to know that uh, it is s times the square root of 2. You could also write down, this might be important to write down, that that also means that s is equal to h divided by the square root of 2. Uh, because then you could write this. You could write that the area is also equal to 1 half this squared, where you have the hypotenuse over the square root of 2 squared. And then we could simplify that one more time. I know I probably didn't give you very much room on your notes. So this is going to be 2 times 2. That's going to be 1 fourth. This is going to be h squared over 4. So that's interesting. So you could have this as the area of an isosceles right triangle. Or you could have this as your area of an isosceles right triangle, just kind of depending on if you know one of these two sides of the right triangle or if you know the hypotenuse. OK. From here, we can start working on this first problem now. So if you remember, we're, this was the base. And one of these cross sections right here is equivalent to a square, where the side of a square was coming up. So this distance is s. So what we will do is I'm going to say that the volume is equal to from a to b is going to be 0 to 1. So I'm going to go 0 to 1. And I'm going to go ahead and write down a of x with respect to x. This is what we're trying to do. But I need to know the formula of a square. Well, the formula of a square is s squared. All right, that's easy. Well, what is s? s is equal to this distance. That means you take the top function and you subtract the bottom function. This top function was, what was this one? The square root of x. The bottom function was x squared. So we're going to do the square root of x minus x squared. That is s. So now we plug that into this formula. So here we go. Volume equals 0 to 1. The area of a square is s squared, so something squared. And the side of the square is the square root of x minus x squared with respect to x. There we go. That is the volume integral right there. Now, it does say to find the volume. We're not going to spend time on the lesson actually taking doing the integral. You'd have to multiply this out, squared and stuff. You'll do that in some of your practice problems. Um, let's not take spend all the time on just doing integration. Let's, we're figuring out how to set this up. Now, notice this volume is different than the ones we've done in our last two lessons. Do you remember how our last two lessons, we would always say volume equals pi, and then you'd have like a radius being squared? Remember, that is because we were revolving it around a line. And so we were creating a circle, which means pi r squared from a to b. Okay, That is not what we're doing today. Don't get that confused. We are just trying to take an integral of the area of a cross section, which m means it can be confusing between the two. So I have purposefully put problems from our last three lessons from this entire unit in the practice. Because that really forces you to kind of think a little bit about what you're doing and don't just automatically start squaring things and throwing a pi on the front. All right, let's now do these three uh, types of shapes. So first thing is an equilateral triangle. Let's remember what our formula is. OK, so there is our equilateral triangle. And I'm going to go down here and just kind of draw this again, that I have this weird type of shape going like this. And that I'm doing this is my perpendicular equilateral triangle. or that's perpendicular to the x-axis. So this is kind of weird. Let's take a look at what this is going to look like. All right, there are some equilateral triangles. You can see that. Uh, so if you, if you make a little bit fewer of them, and you can see. So as you create more and more of these tr equilateral triangles, you can see the ones that are on the ends here are going to be smaller than the ones in the middle because they're all equilateral. 
put in a whole bunch of these triangles and we can kind of see what the shapes looks like. This, this is interesting. So the shape, really sharp corner on top, almost like a fin coming across here. And uh, okay, so there's the visual representation. Hard to kind of think of these without really seeing it in a 3D model. Let's go back to our notes. So we need to do, what do we need? We need to figure out what this S is. We actually already did, remember? That S, this right here is uh, square root of x minus x squared. That is our S. So we just need to plug that into this thing. And then uh, we've got our volume. So volume is going to equal from 0 to 1. Notice there's no pi in front. I didn't do that because I'm not revolving anything. Now I'm going to have the square root of 3 fourths times this is my s. So I go square root of x minus x squared quantity squared because it's s squared. Now I could clean this up a little bit and say that it is the square root of 3 fourths could come in front of the integral from 0 to 1 just because it is a constant. So that's okay to do that if you want to. And boom, there's my volume. Again, this lesson, we're not, for the lesson, we're not going to solve that out. We'll just set up the integrals to help us speed this lesson up. All right, the semicircle. What's the semicircle going to look like? Let's take a look. Okay, that's kind of cool. These nice semicircles. And remember, not a full circle. So when we're thinking of the area of those things, you got to remember that. And here, let's add some more circles so you can see. This would be the top view it would look like. Just a bunch of, looks like cross little lines, but they're cross sections. Perpendicular. Whoa, spinning out of control. Perpendicular, remember, to the x-axis. Here's the x-axis. These are going to go straight up and down. Uh, let's add some more of these semicircles. Stop spinning, you turkey. And, whoa, that's a lot of them. Oh, so cool. All right, so here's the shape. Let's take a look. It's kind of interesting. A little bit like what we had before with that fin, but it's nice and rounded on the top because it's semicircle. Okay, back to figuring out the formula for this. So I know the, the area of a semicircle is going to be pi r squared divided by 2. That's important because now I'm going to integrate this thing. So my volume is going to equal the integral from 0 to 1 of this. So I've got pi over 2. And then my radius is going to be squared. What is the radius? OK, think carefully. This is the entire way across that semicircle. That is the diameter for this example. So if it's the diameter for this, that means we've got to just take this thing and divide it by 2. So it's going to be the square root of x minus x squared all over 2. OK, so let's see if we can simplify this and clean it up just a little bit. Um, I could take the pi over 2 to the front of this integral. I could also take this fraction, which is going to be 2 squared. So that's going to be a 1 fourth. I could take that part of it out. And what am I left with? 0 to 1 of the square root of x minus x squared quantity squared. And then last step, just before we have to take the integral, would be this. Now don't forget that this squared, don't make that, that algebra 1 mistake. The Algebra 1 kids who don't know how to FOIL, don't know how to multiply this out, the squared, remember, when you have to multiply this out, it's this whole thing times itself again. you got to distribute, distribute, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, last one here is the isosceles right triangle. Now, I don't have a visual representation of this one to show you, but here, this is important. This depends on if my isosceles right triangle, let me try that again. Okay, there we go. I found some shapes to show you what I'm talking about. So when you have an isosceles right triangle, and with this first triangle, this is the S, the S and the hypotenuse. So if the side here, one of the sides is on the, uh, the perpendicular cross-section, this is the side, where then it's coming off from there. So you, it would have this being there and one of these. The triangle would come straight up like that. And you would have to use the formula of knowing that you have the S this part right here, you'd have the an isosceles right triangle, you'd know what the side is, so you'd use that formula. Now in this example here, the sides would be up above and the H, the hypotenuse, would be on the shaded uh, region that you're talking about, that base. This would be your H. So if all you know is the H, then you'd be using that formula to figure out the area of the cross section. What I will do for these problems is I will say, what the base of the triangle is. So on this one, 
let's say that it is uh, the base is the side. I'm going to add this in your note, so you'll probably already see this in there before I run the copies. So now I need to come up with the area of, what was it again? Oh yeah, 1 half s squared, because it's just, a, it's half a square. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, this is half a square. So it's 1 half s squared. And then what are we doing? We know that the side is this. We keep using it over and over again. So volume is going to equal the integral from 0 to 1 of what? We're going to say 1 half, and then the square root of x minus x squared quantity squared. And yeah, I could bring that 1 half to the front, but that is going to be the volume. I got one more problem here. This time, it is going to be perpendicular to the y-axis. That is very important because that means we're taking an integral with respect to y. Let's first fill in the base here. I, I didn't have all the lines. y equals 0 is going to be right here. And then x equals, what did I say? x equals 2 right here. x equals 2. It's going to go all the way up here to 8 because 2 cubed is 8. And then I could kind of... I'm going to go perpendicular cross sections this way. So I could put in a bunch of lines if I wanted. And they're all going to be squares. So if they're all going to be squares, they're going to be coming off of your screen towards you in the form of squares. So these would be larger squares. These would be really tiny squares, and so forth. So what is the formula for a square? The area of a square is s squared. So what I need to know is all of these things are s's. They're all a bunch of different s's. So how long is that? So s is equal to, well, this whole thing right there would be 2. That's 2. I'm going to subtract this part only. So I take the whole thing, which is 2, and subtract that. Well, what is that? Oh, i got to change this so it's in terms of y. So I'm going to say that x equals the cube root of y. Hopefully by now you're getting used to doing that. So it's going to be the cube root of y, 2 minus the cube root of y. That is the formula for that graph right there. And that would give us 2 minus that graph would give us all of these lines inside the shaded region. OK, let's just set up the formula, and we're good. Volume equals, uh, no pi. Don't put a pi. That's our last lesson. We're going from the smallest y value to the largest y value. So you look at this graph. What's the smallest y value of this bordered region? 0. What is the highest part here. This y value way up here is an 8, so I'm going to go from 0 to 8. And now I do s squared, which is this. So I'm going to have my open parentheses, 2 minus the cube root of y quantity squared with respect to y. And that is it. And that means you are done with calculus. Congratulations on getting through this year. For some of you, it was very painful. For others of you, you were just like, oh my goodness, this is so easy. I should have taken Calculus BC. Either way, great luck on your mastery checks, your te upcoming test for Unit 11, but especially on the AP exam. Hopefully you have a few weeks left here before you're finishing this up and you've got time to still review and study. Remember, it's just practice as many type of AP type questions as you can and then go back and review the things as you're struggling. All right, good luck. And I will not see you back in the next lesson. This is it. I'm out.